Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Chris Short, uh, a host with the most of Red Hat live streaming. I'm here to kind of demonstrate something that I think a few people here might not realize a capability that we have with Podman through VS Code, uh, specifically VS Code's uh, remote remote experience, I'm sorry. Uh, so basically what that does from you know a system side is it reads your SSH config file. So me being on a Mac, and the fireplace behind me having, you know, a Linux OS on it, I can essentially SSH into that box, create a VS Code environment to where I can do all my work from any machine to that box. So that box is actually my, quote, personal computer, and I'm on my work computer right now. Um, so let's turn my camera off real quick and show you what's going on here. So what I have here is a VS Code extension, everything, or VS Code with the extensions installed. Uh, if you're curious, the specific extension is right there, remote development. Um, this can work on WSL, right? And it's, you know, and it's, it's, it's a full pack of other extensions. So in theory, you can do containers with this. So I could set up a container with my dev environment in it all by itself. But for this instance, since I'm just SSHing into the box behind me, my personal computer where I'm doing work personally, or where I need a Linux instance for work stuff, for example, we do uh, the point system uses a container to do all of its calculation for the level up hour. So if you've ever turned into the level up hour and we've talked about sweet, sweet internet points, you have seen the output of a Podman process. So just to let you know, right, like this extension's installed, you can see it, there it is, Remote Explorer. What this is reading is my local SSH config. Um, and as you can see, I am a fan of uh, Looney Tunes characters for naming, but also notice that I'm a Tailscale user, so all these instances have a VPN endpoint address as well, so I could be technically anywhere in the world and just remote into my local box and run everything that I need to run from my machine. I've already got this uh, instance set up, but basically what it's doing is I'm SSHing into a box, VS Code spins up whatever it needs to spins up, and it just opens up this, you know, port between the system behind me, the remote system, and uh, it does all the SSH tunneling and everything else. So, you know, I'll go through and I'll be like, oh, I need to add an extra, you know, f I need to add a points reference file in here, basically. Uh, run, uh, do a couple other things, you know, administratively and then I have this terminal instance that's on the remote box so to prove that like I'm on a Mac right now you can tell just from the the UI uh, let's do this OS release hey look that's a Fedora 34 box so I'm fully in my IDE using that terminal on a Fedora 34 box which means for level up points if I go into the points directory, you see there is a... All right, so you see in the level up tools, get sheet directory, there's this make file. So I need to run a make podman build, and it's gonna do all my podman stuff and give me all the, you know, all the work that needs to happen inside that pod, pulling in other sheets from Google Cloud, et cetera, et cetera. Um, calculate all the points, and then spit out a latest sheet, which will be in the other directory. Well, not that directory. Uh, which will be in the points directory here under current sheet. So just cat that out. Current points dot CSV. And there's all the points for the people that have participated in the show. Um, and all of this is done through VS Code on my Mac, just using that remote extensions client or you know extension to SSH into the system behind me. And all this stuff runs over SSH. Now, what I want to show you is something you know, like a typical use case, obviously for uh, you know 
Podman. Let's just run a web server real quick. So I've already pulled down the images. Uh, let's just tune up this web server real quick. Oh, oh, it's already in use. Crap. All right. So since it's already started, uh, <laughs> it can easily show you the actual page um, from the remote machine behind me. And yes, you'll see all kinds of weird stuff because I have all kinds of weird stuff on my local network. But 8080, hey, it works. Taking this a step further, um, close that real quick. If I wanted to edit my Hugo-driven website, so if you're not familiar with Hugo, it's a static website generator. Um, I use it to run pretty much all my websites, including my newsletter, devopsish.com. Please subscribe, blah, blah, blah. But again, uh, if I ever needed to, from my work machine, work on that remote box, I could be on tail scale sitting at, you know, a conference venue and like, oh, shoot, uh, I was making changes. I had some stuff in flight. I need to get to that and work on it and commit it before, you know, the next newsletter goes out or something like that, right? Like, I can totally do that from here. So I have multiple websites that use multiple view versions of Hugo, but most one of them, you know, it's like one version versus the other. Uh, so if I do this, this actually spins up a local instance of Hugo running locally on the machine uh, on port 1313, which is great, but it's on the other box, and it's, it's probably firewalled off. So give it a second to build here. It's trying to, you know, pull in twi tweets from half the internet, et cetera, et cetera. But look, VS Code gives me this wonderful little pop-up that's like, hey! We could forward your application port over here. Let me open that in the browser. Okay, let me let me just, you know, come back over to localhost here and say localhost. Um folks, it's I'm on my Mac, localhost thirteen thirteen. There's my website. So there's some really cool capabilities in VS Code that I think we could utilize extensively with Podman. So thank you for your time today, and uh, I look forward to seeing what other fun things people can come up with here. And this was designed to be a brain teaser, so hopefully you can get some ideas from it. Thanks.